Hi, this is Eric with Sweat to Details, and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to perform a rinseless wash. The rinseless wash technology has been out for a few years now. The science behind it says that there are polymers that encapsulate the dirt and the lubricity of the solution help whisk it away without damaging your paint. I'm not too sure about the science, but I will attest that it does work. I've been doing it on my cars for a few years now, and I have not noticed any additional marring, scratching, or swirling of the surfaces. The rinse and wash system is a great option for those that cannot do the traditional two bucket method, either because they live in an apartment complex or there are water restrictions, or maybe there's water conservation problems where you can't have runoff going into the drains. For me personally, I am now located in sunny Jacksonville, so I prefer the method because I don't have to do my car out out in the sun. I don't have to pull out my canopies and it's a lot more convenient for me to wash my car in my garage and I can do it under an hour. So let's go over what you need to complete this system. Now let's go over everything that you'll need to complete a rinseless wash. Uh, there's many methods out there for the rinseless wash. I prefer the method where you use mini microfiber towels and you put them in a bucket of solution, let them soak spray the towel down with a mixture of solution and then wipe the panel. This is my preferred rinseless wash ONR Optimum No Rinse. I believe they pioneered the technology of it and there's a lot of companies out there that make this stuff now. Meguiar's, Adams, a lot of people are on this bandwagon but what I really like about this product is it has many uses. You can make the no, no rinseless wash with it. You can uh, dilute it down and make clay lube. You can dilute it to make a quick detailer. It's basically three products in one which comes in really handy. And as you can see I haven't used a lot of this. I've had it for maybe a year so a little bit goes a long ways. You can uh, for when you're mixing your solution for the rinseless wash uh, the dilution ratio is one ounce which is basically one squirt of it per two gallons of water. So it goes a long ways when you're just doing rinseless washes. In this gallon jug, I have another gallon of the rinseless wash solution, and I just use that to fill up this spray bottle, which this is a weed spray bottle, a pump sprayer that you can buy off of Amazon. I think I got it for 12 or $13. I prefer this over the traditional sprayers just because you're spraying so much solution. It just saves you a little energy, a little bit of time. And I also will throw in a little quick wax. They actually make no rinse solution now that has wax added. It's double the price for, for this gallon jug. I think it was less than $30. So you're looking at about $60 for the stuff with the wax and you don't have as many options with it as you do with just a straight up wash. So this jug of wax will cost you less than $30 and you can use it whenever you want to wax a car, which for me is about once a month. You got your regular Homer's all-purpose bucket from Home Depot and mini microfiber towels with two Cobra Weave drying towels on top. Take your towels off. You can see I have a Gamma Seal and the Gamma Seal I got from Amazon, I think that was another thing that was around $13 and you push it down on your bucket and it gives you a screw type seal on the top. That way you can reuse your solution. Basically, I'm just putting clean microfibers in the solution. Nothing dirty ever goes in here, so it's clean solution. And I'll have this whole bucket filled up at one point, and I'll just keep using it and using it. And the great thing about this with the Gamma Seal is I can take this on the go. If I'm doing a maintenance wash for a customer, I can take it to car shows, stuff like that. It comes in really handy just to have this wash in a bucket ready to go at any time. So that's everything you will need to perform this wash. Let's go ahead and go over the steps for the wash itself. Hi, we're back. As you can see, I have the vehicle pulled in the garage. I'm out of the sunlight, I'm in the shade. This uh, particular car was washed maybe a week ago. It has been driven through several rainstorms, so we do have some light soiling on the vehicle. You can do, use this system on a much dirtier vehicle than this, but for demonstration purposes, this is what we'll use. Over here, you can see that I have my microfiber soaking in the solution. I forgot to add that with the solution, you want to mix this with deionized water. That way you don't have to worry about mineral deposits on the vehicle 
just in case the solution does dry on there before you're able to wipe it all off. One thing I've noticed about being in Florida is the humidity level. I can do large sections of the car without wiping it off. I can pretty much do the whole half. Okay, let's begin. There's a spray bottle I was showing you earlier. I'm gonna pump it up a few times. And basically, you wanna do like the traditional two bucket method. You wanna start high and work your way down. All I'm doing at this point is soaking the panel down. Gives you a little bit more lubricity on the panel before you wipe it. It helps loosen up any deposits of dirt that might be on the car itself. Now that the panel's wet, take out one of my microfiber towels. You can see I've already got it folded into sections of four. Nice and damp. And it doesn't have to be that quite that wet, so I'll, I'll squeeze a little bit of that out. Fold it into four sections, and that will essentially give you eight surfaces when you're wiping the panel. Technique for wiping, you don't want to rub. You don't want to do it like a traditional wash you might do. What I like to do is go with the flow of the vehicle, with the airflow. So I'll take and just wipe one section. I mean, obviously with the corners and stuff, you got to go around. And I'll come back. Then at that point, there's not really much on there, but I'll flip it. Be safe. Get you another section done. At that point, we got two dirty sides. So I'll fold it that way. Now I got two fresh sides. Go ahead and get the spoiler. Get the side rail. Flip it. The section of paint on the back. All the way along the line. And I'll go ahead and get the glass too. The solution will help you clean the glass up. At that point, I've got four dirty sides. So I'll take it, turn it inside out, and now I've got four more sections. Work my way down. This is going to be the dirtier portion of the car, so you may find yourself flipping the towel a little more often. Get around the handle, all the way back. I'll flip it this quarter. This is always a dirty area of the vehicle. You may want to flip the towel a couple times right here. It's all it's all on feel. I mean you can see this is the, probably the dirtiest the towel has been the entire time. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up but uh, yeah there's quite a bit back there and if you feel you didn't get it all go over it again with the fresh side. I'm, I'm applying very little pressure here, just, just wiping it off. And you can see it's pretty clean that time. I'll come over and finish this rest of this door. And at this point, my towel's pretty soiled, so I'm done with it. I'm not putting that back in my fresh solution. This towel's done. So I'll throw that into the dirty bucket. I'll grab me a brand new towel out of there. Nothing dirty ever goes in here. Bring it out. See where I started before? It's almost like mowing a yard, just going back and forth. Flip it, so you got the soiling coming up. As long as you're flipping your towel consistently and not letting a whole lot of that stuff build up on there, it shouldn't be a problem. I'm gonna give me a couple fresh sides here. And this is always a really dirty area of the car, so I will definitely go over it a couple times. Get down in that crack real good. And I'll get me a, a fresh side going here. And don't be stingy with the microfibers. If you can't remember the last dirty side of your microfiber towel, just start over with another one. At this point, I like to open up the door. 
and I'll get all the jams, wipe all those down while I'm at it. All up through the cracks. Get underneath. Up along the sides. That's where a lot of dirt likes to hide on you. Sometimes I'll, let, I'll wait till the very end. Typically I wait till the very end to do this because I like to dry them at the end. And at that point I don't want to have contamination on my dry towel that could possibly be going from the door jams. Now this is the method I was telling you about before where I'll actually wax the vehicle using the McGuire spray wax. Before I dry the car, you see it's still wet. Of course, where you live, you may not be able to do a section this big, but it's so humid and muggy here, it doesn't dry very fast. But I'll take the spray wax before I dry, and I'll spray all the doors, all the sections that I did not dry yet, like so. And this wax works great with it a little wet like this. It may be diluted slightly, but it's not going to be enough to, to where it's going to really affect the protection. I'll take my Cobra, Cobra microfiber towel and dry the panels with the wax. Basically, you're waxing your car at the same time you're drying it. Couldn't be easier. Now, when you dry, you can remember I didn't do this section of the car. This section is still dirty. You want to keep this, clout, this towel clean, so I'll leave it wet to a certain degree because I'm going to overlap that when I hit this section of the car. You don't want to contaminate this towel because you're going to be using this towel for pretty much the entire car. I usually use two different drying towels, but like I was saying, you're going to be using yard, large sections of it. You just dry your car up. And since I used the deionized water, you can see that there's really no residue. That water dries up and it leaves a really nice finish on your car without leaving all those nasty mineral deposits you'll get from tap water. And of course I dry the inside of the jams. I'm not going to do that just yet because I still want to wash the rest of this car. But as for my video, that's all of it and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit. Feel free to leave comments and questions and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Say so Eric with Sweat the Details. Thank you.